Final Fights. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who just got done with a vigorous run on the beach. It's Chris Kelly. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yep, so Chris and I went out for our morning jog on the beach, and he just started sprinting, then I started sprinting, and since neither of us are Apollo or Rocky, Chris rolled his ankle on a seashell, and then I stepped on a jellyfish, and then I stepped on a shell, and then we only ran about, what, 30 feet combined, would you say? Well, it, it depends on if you're talking about it when, whenever you threw the jellyfish at me. Yeah. Um, I then had to backtrack another 10 feet, and then... Then we had, had to go to the go, hospital. And then that was an extra 70 feet. Um, <laughs> that thing got right on your back and just latched itself to you. I, you know, it's the damnedest things. They, they move so they move so sluggishly whenever they're on land until they see a human, and then they're just on you like a pack of wolves on a three-legged cat. It took over it's your just, body. It basically used you as a marionette, and you were just running around the beach being controlled I'm actually by a people. jellyfish right now. It's... <laughs> I'm importing a bunch of seawater, so around, in, in about 30 minutes, I'm going to have to cut this short. <laughs> You're in your bathtub right now recording this. <laughs> You're getting the guys from that TV show Tank just to build a full tank in your place. Your neighbors yeah, will hate but, it. I'm the, gonna... the neighbors hate it, but, you know, I, I pay my HOA fees just like everybody else. So is it? <laughs> I'm going to call you Chris Jellyfish Kelly. <laughs> R- rolls right off the tongue. So... The reason, the, the, man, it's so fluid. Uh, the reason that we're, we're discussing this is so you and I have already talked about Rocky 1 and 2 on the Final Fights podcast. And so naturally you came back for 3. And what I'm talking about is so Rocky fights Clubber Lang in, the, in their first fight. In the, in the fight, there's 71 total punches thrown. Rocky loses. Uh, he gets knocked out. He loses his belt. His trainer dies. And so he, gets, he starts training with Apollo for a rematch with Clubber Lang. And they run on the beach together. And they have a very long shot of Sylvester Stallone's thighs when he's running. I don't know if you noticed this. I did. Yeah, there, so, there's, a, there's some really uh, intricate shots of very sweaty thighs in that scene. <laughs> we, you know what's kind of interesting is, so we talked about the first fight, and, and because of the, the budget in the first Rocky, you, know, you talked about how they brought in extras from a, a nursing home, and they had nurses, and they had a few angles that they could achieve. And then the second one looks more like a traditional boxing match it looks like it could potentially be on hbo more cuts more more flair but this third one man i mean just the amount of editing they like the slow motion in this one the different kind of camera angles and just the amount of editing this is a much more thematic kind of edited piece and i don't know if you feel that way no i i 100 feel that way you can tell that there's a massive difference between rocky and rocky 3 i read that sylvester stallone really wanted to change the way that rocky 3 looked because he wanted to show how celebrityism had changed him as as change i'm sorry changed stallone and he felt that it would be best to reflect that in Rocky as well because a lot of the, the rocky movies have a lot of biographical scenes and language that from Stallone's life. So he felt that it would be best reflected in Rocky. So they changed the way it looked. They changed a lot of the um, camera movements. They changed everything about it. And I got to tell you, I was watching this first round that they get to, because this is a short fight. This is three rounds. And I was watching the, the first round and Rocky opens up. He goes 32 and 0. He lands 32 punches and Clubber lands nothing. And I remember watching it. Chris, because we've we've talked about the how a, Apollo opened up with a lot of jabs and a lot of punches and in, in the other two, but this this fight takes it to a, a complete other level of of momentum. You have Rocky landing thirty two punches and he's kind of crab walk. It's a very I don't know if you noticed this on this one, but did you feel like this one felt much more choreographed and rehearsed? But you saw it at, rather than the first the first two. Uh, maybe it, it, it's a testament to Carl Weathers and Sylvester Stallone. But in this one, Rocky crab steps, two steps, throws a right, crab steps, throws a right, crab steps, throws a right, and <laughs> essentially goes around the ring doing that. And it's a very, I mean, it's a good fight scene, and I 100% bought into Mr. T, Clubber Lang's physicality. When he hits, I felt it. And the score oh, later yeah. on, when it's like, dun-dun, when the, the score builds mm-hmm. later on, and at the end when Rocky knocks out Clubber, you, it sounds like a, a plane takes off in the, in the sound <laughs> effect. It really does. No, it, it reminded me a lot of um, in Raging Bull whenever they used gunshots for whenever Jake LaMotta would yeah, hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it literally sounds like a, a it sounds like a machine or almost like an animal every time that Clubber Lang hits him, and it really you really feel it, especially if 
you have a nice sound system. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, I do love the, the, obviously he couldn't do, so in the first one that he went the full, full, like 15 rounds and the second one, they almost go to 15 rounds. So in this one, you got to make it different. So I like the three round aspect of this. I like that the three rounds play out in live act, like live time, not like the first two, then skip through everything to 15. But I guess my problem with this fight is it just felt every fight's choreographed, but I saw, I kind of saw the chore- choreography in this one. Does that make sense? Is, am I, am I going crazy here? Did you notice that with this fight? Yeah, I, you do notice a little bit that it is choreographed. It, it doesn't have the same rawness and it, it doesn't have the same feel as the first two fights where I feel that maybe Rocky is coming into his own as a boxer. So it's, a, is becoming his craft now. So he would look a little bit more different while he was throwing. Yeah. As opposed to in the first two films, that also could be reflected upon it. But also, you know, he's he's going up against Mr. T or sorry, Clover, uh, James Clover Lang. And he's uh, he's he's kind of he's the reflection of what Rocky was before he had got the belt. Mm-hmm. So it's, I could see why Clover Lang's boxing would be a little bit different than Rocky's would be. And then after he gets after Clover Lang gets the belt, he then becomes a little bit more relaxed, I guess you'd say. To me, he doesn't seem as aggressive mm-hmm. uh, because he already has the cha- championship belt. So, but you do notice that the the fighting techniques it does look more of like a dance. It's not as raw or as brutal as the first two fights. But the sound effects are ten thousand times. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. And I mean, I, I guess I just love that. So in, in the first round, he lands 49 of his 51 jabs. So CompuBox, oh, yeah. they, they did a record of this. <laughs> and I, I love that. So Vladimir and Vitaly Klitschko, who I love, they're heavyweight boxers. They actually are number two with 38 landed in a round. So that was the record at the time. Third, <laughs> though, later on, obviously. But 38 is the record. And Rocky landed 49. And then this first round, <laughs> it's... For a heavyweight fight, it's it's bonkers. But I mean, once again, it's Rocky, and he's made out of iron. He's made out of steel. And I, you know what? You know what? You know what's interesting is while watching the training montage for this film with him and Apollo, it really sells that he could throw forty nine punches or for, land forty nine jabs in one round. So, oh yeah. Even though this isn't obviously believable, it never was meant to be. But you can kind of believe th- that Rocky could do this because he got his bo- he got down to three point something percent body fat. And so you think he could punch all day. So you believe it. It's exaggerated, but it's believable, which I like about this yeah. franchise. Yeah. And also to go with Clubber Lang, I mean, he he himself looks like he is a machine. So he looks like there's nothing that is going to stop him. I mean, he says multiple times, I can't be beat. I won't be beat. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I just I love the dialogue that we use to describe Clubber Lang to build up to him, you know, throughout the whole Rocky franchise, it's always that Rocky can't win, he won't win, and he always overcomes, but he's never up against somebody who says that I am going to, I am going to beat you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't hear that uh, up until this point. And, you know, the, the, uh, Mick tells him, you know, he's going to knock you in tomorrow. He says, you ain't, <laughs> the reason why that, uh, he thinks that he's going to lose is because you haven't been hungry since you won that belt. And he confesses to him that all the boxing matches that he has been, that Rocky has been having up until this point have all been fixed. He's like, they're great fighters. But they never had a chance. Mm-hmm. Tomato cans. But they're better than tomato cans, but kind of tomato cans, I guess. <laughs> I love what uh, Apollo Creed says before the first boxing match. He says, uh, I feel that the strength would have uh, go to the challenger, while experience in the world's hardest head would have to go to Rocky Balboa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know about that. <laughs> I really think the NFL should take his head and study it for future helmets. <laughs> well, you know what else I, I dig though is I was watching this and I kind of wrote some notes and in this you have you have the all the wide shots then you have the different angles then they brought in the announcers who play much more of a prevalent part in this and the steady cam work was different in this as well then I really dug the lower angles that they were shot, shooting from the corners and just the, the editing I thought was good and my, the most powerful thing about this the one thing I liked most about this fight was in what's there's a scene where Clubber picks up Rocky and throws him into the corner. And when he did it, they, they show it in slow motion, but it really sells how strong this guy is. And I really sort yeah. of dug that about it. I, I, I thought slow motion was used not, you know, some movies just use slow motion. Like, Hey, that looks cool. I'm going to use it. I feel like the slow mm-hmm. motion in this was, was played wonderfully with the throw. And also I liked whenever Rocky got knocked down in round, let's see, two, I like that they played a Jaws type score, like like he was under <laughs> like he was underwater. So like you you feel like when he's on the ground, it's it really seems like he's underwater trying to get his feet back. So that's another credit to the score. 
And I, I dug that about it a lot. Yeah, it's a fantastic score. It really puts you in the, almost like a scary mood, too. And it really shows that uh, it, that Rocky is very scared for himself. There is no, there's that, that point where he doesn't think that he can actually do this. Mm-hmm. It, it, mm. And I love, though, that he does. But, you know, what? I guess the narrative that they always play on this. Did you you kind of believe that Clubber Lang punches himself out? Because in the third round, he's just punching air. He's missing a lot. But his trainer mm-hmm. is yelling at him, not 100%, not 100%. And it's basically the mistake Apollo made in the second one. But I love, I, I feel like the air was getting hurt when he was punching it, Clubber Lang. <laughs> <laughs> because Mr. T, man, like this is footwork and how strong he got. I mean, he was firing those jabs off beautifully. But yeah, I guess... Uh, I, I believe that he tired himself out. I kind of like the narrative about it. And I liked, I liked that Rocky was taunting in this one. You know, your mother, like, wait, my mother hits harder than that. Like he, and he's rubbing yeah. Mr. T's head. Like he, he got into that. Like it's, it's a cool, yeah. and that's, do you think that's Rocky final fight strengths? And sorry, I'm talking a lot, but do you think their final fights, the strengths come from the narrative? Like that, they build it around a, a very distinctive narrative. And I think that's why yeah, you like him a lot. There's a lot of uh, head rubbing and nose bopping, as we know from the other two films and, and all these. And also, Rocky gets thrown in the corner of literally every one of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> he gets DJ Jazzy Jeff in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> uh, at the end of the second round, Apollo tells him, man, it, it, this man is going to beat your head off. And Rocky <laughs> replies, hey, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> And he did. He mm-hmm. tired him out so that he could then pop him in the chin and have Mr. T or sorry, Clubber Lang go down. I mean, it's, do you think that's do you think that's pretty interesting with so Apollo goes out of his way to train him. And at the end, Apollo's like, it doesn't take a man to stand there and get his head beat in. But don't you think Rocky would have talked to him? Like, listen, I'm going to try to like bear this guy down. Like he, <laughs> you have Apollo screaming, yeah. uh, right? Like, don't you, would have Apollo have caught on to that? Or do you think that's just a narrative decision to kind of add more drama? To the scene. Oh, definitely a narrative decision that, that to add a little bit more to it because if if he had been like, "Yo, listen, duh, dude, hey, you know how hard that my head is, all right? Take it down a notch." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're gonna talk about this later on, all right? I'm just just you know, pump the brakes, all right, Apollo. Sheesh. <laughs> get the eye of the tiger. They said get the eye of the tiger in this one. Oh, I love it. And he's just oh, a, he's yeah. just a man. Well, before their first match, uh, Clubber Lang, man, he he's he's on fire the entire time. Oh. I don't know if you caught this, but uh, whenever before they even fight for the first time, uh, whenever Clubber is taunting Rocky in between, in, like in the hallway, and he's like, "I'll beat you right now." He takes one of the police officers and throws him over the banister yeah. to get to Rocky. <laughs> he is no joke. That, uh, Mr. That, T, that extra got destroyed. Mr. T was was no slouch. I mean, he was, he has a whole history in football and martial arts before he even started working in movies. He was a, voted the um, the second most uh, was the meanest bouncer in America at the time. And he was also uh, in this interview shortly after making this movie for Playboy. He said, "I'm the best bodyguard because I'll take a bullet, I'll I'll take a stab wound, I'll take a hit upside the head." I'm a kamikaze pilot. The president got shot because his men relaxed, referring to whenever Reagan got shot. So, just, wow. This is the, I mean, he is an intimidating man. And also, um, just some little behind the scenes facts. Um, you know, obviously Mr. T was very proud of this movie because it showcased him really well. And he's a very proud and outspoken, um, mama's boy. He then taught, brought his mother to the premiere of this movie. His mom, after seeing the scene where, um, Clubber Lang is talking to Adrian, saying, hey, woman, hey, woman, why don't you go to my apartment tonight? I'll show you what a man's like. His, Mr. T's mother said, I did not raise you to talk to a woman like that. And she got up and left. Yeah, I love that <laughs> fact. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, this is this this end fight scene. This final fight is definitely the most sweatiest, greasiest <laughs> fight, yeah. fight in Rocky History up to this point. <laughs> I mean, Mr. T, he's baby oiled in this one. Why can I oh tell you? Oh my God. But Be- before The Rock, we had Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Keeping baby oil in business <laughs> since. <laughs> Whenever this movie was made, uh, since 82. <laughs> well, after after the fight, uh, Adrian says, Are you all right? Rocky says, Yeah, never better. 